In this video, we're going over how I shoot cinematic videos of myself, kind of like what I'm doing right now, and everybody being really creeped out by me looking into my front sliding glass window. Regular gangster out of it. So guys, we're basically going to be going over multiple breakdowns from the previous video I released. And the big lessons you'll walk away with this video is just one, lighting from the shadow side. You can see even this shot right here, the lights carving out the shape in my face right here. Everybody has to be creeped out if they're looking through the window right now. Second is color contrast. And then we'll kind of go over storytelling and everything. For this shot, I just need a little bit of a kicker light on me, Jiyun M20C. I made a review about this and some of my homies were like, did you actually like that thing? Yes, this has probably become my most used light. So a trick aside from, you know, shooting from the shadow side. So obviously the FX3 is going to be over here. So I want to try to get the light over on this side to create shadows on the side that the camera's seeing, if that made sense. What if we bounce it back into the window here? All right, now we have just a real subtle blue light. So we're going to get a lot of tungstens from, you know, the Hollywood streets here. So we're creating that natural tail and orange. This is how tail and orange is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be in a color grade. You're supposed to try to get in camera. That's where the magic happens. That's how you get the cinematic look. I know a lot of people hate on the tail and orange, but it's just, it's color science. You know, our skin tones are orange and the complementary color to orange is till. So that's personally why I like it so much. All right, we're rolling on the FX3. There we go. You see, we got our flares there. We're at T24 on the Blazar Remus show you so this is without the light let's just turn on the car here i am about to run out of gas so we're gonna have to run this I forgot which button it is. so that's actually too much light so let's go and dim it down we're at 15 percent this is it off there we go so it looks like the light's coming from my dash that's the whole point of this we're getting some cool flares as we drive around so let's just hit it. So guys, this is the effort that it takes to film yourself in a cinematic way. Um, I know it might look complex, but the truth is there's just fundamental things. Again, you want to light from the opposite side of the camera because you want the camera to see all the shadows on whatever your subject is. You want to create color contrast. So you see, again, we're going to have warm lights outside and I'm creating this bluer tiller look hitting my face. Again, that's another staple of a cinematic look. On top of that, you want to do storytelling. A lot of people lack on storytelling, even if you do an insert. So like in this video, I'm gonna show the camera set down on the passenger seat. That just creates an environment of like my camera and I are going on a road trip. Uh, but if you're trying to create a cinematic video, you know, it's okay to, you know, have some moments where there's just, you know, whatever the product is or whatever the thing is that you're talking about. Okay, let's hit it. All right guys, even Sedona's in here for the ride. All right. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to put this camera away. So guys, when it comes to filming yourself and you're using cinema glass, you know, to get more of a filling out of your shots, you need a focus system. This is my go-to just because I can easily put a USB-C cable. Uh, some cameras will actually power this motor via USB-C and you can also do camera control from it too. Do you need a wireless monitor set up too? I use the DJI just because it's so easy just to bring this out to the back of the camera like this. You can see it's the focus motor right here. So I think right here would be good. So I need to redo that composition again i think for some people this might be a touch but if everyone who's like done filmmaking you've been on a team before you've been on a, even like a indie set or whatever it is like this isn't too hard it is cumbersome though and it is a lot of effort they have to put into it but you know the results you get out there kind of next level i could just do my a7r5 or my fx3 autofocus lenses that'll work too but i'm just obsessed with anamorphic all right guys now we're doing some uh nighttime interior shots once again, I am by myself. Biggest trick that I can give you is obviously location. Having a great location will do most of the work for you. But the other trick is you just need one light. And with that light, you just want to create some shape. So you can see this air maybe looks freaking sick. And um, yeah, this looks great, but there's too much light going on. And I haven't filmed on this side yet. So I'm going to kill that light because I want to create shape. And how am I going to create shape? With shadows. For some reason, people are scared of shadows, but in reality, uh, when you go watch some of your favorite movies, uh, that's why they look cinematic is because there's a lot of shape being created with shadows. So now let's look at this shot again. 
you can see how much more uh, traumatic that is. Um, but there's a trick that I'm using here. Let me show you this. So I'm going to have this TV in a shot, in a couple of shots. We're setting the tone, we're setting in the brain that there's a TV on in here. This TV wasn't bright enough and you see there's a weird green tint and so I'm motivating it with the small rig light. This thing is freaking badass. This is a 60 watt battery powered light. So, you know, there's no cables. There's no, there's nothing you have to add on to there and there's effects built in. And so you can see right now I am on the TV mode and I'm at just 1% and I'm at 6,500 Calvin. I'm gonna put that to 65 right there. And this is just the softbox on there at the grid just to kind of control it. But you can see, you know, that's just the TV. And then when I put this on there, it just kind of motivates it a little bit more. So if we want to get technical, um, what I'm trying to say is, you know, motivated lighting. So not just putting a light up there no matter what. That's probably the biggest thing that I see when people are struggling. It's like, how do I get my, my talking heads to look more cinematic? You need to create more motivated lighting. If you have two lights and they're at full power and they're both just on you, and that's not going to look cinematic. That's going to look more like a news station. If that's what you want, go ahead and do that. But if you're trying to get cinematic lights, you need to kill some of the light. You either want to create a checkerboard to where there's light, dark, light, dark, or you want to just create shape by just having light coming in from one direction. So there's a million ways to do this. Even if you're a natural light, even if you're like just in a bedroom, I could kill all these lights in this amazing living room and just turn on one light. And that's all I need for it to look cinematic. Now we got the insert shot. This is where I'm going to bring in my camera. And once again, I'm just motivating this lamp that was already set in the scene. And I'm just enhancing it just by throwing this into a bush, basically. And uh, I didn't bring a light stand. I didn't think, you know, I just, I wing all this, guys. So, but you can see how the light looks in there. It looks natural. It looks beautiful. This is the trick. This is kind of what it takes to try to do cinematic videos of yourself here. A little bit of a nightmare. Passion kills laziness. Film lazy, find something you're more passionate about filming. Um, maybe the topic you're filming, you're not really psyched about. That's, it's that simple. That's the trick. All right, guys, here is another setup. So once again, we are now using the Blazar Remus 100 millimeter. Uh, how I'm monitoring this is just by the Monitor Plus app. This is the go-to app when I'm trying to do wireless stuff. Now, when I'm out on location, sometimes it's hard to pull focus from this app because you know, you're not getting the cleanest signal out of it, but uh, for interior, more controlled situations, it works just fine. Then for lighting, you can see, once again, I'm not getting fancy. I'm using that Zhiyun M20C. I'm telling you, this is my most used light right now um, I have the grid I have the barn doors just because I don't want to flare out the lens at all because the 100 millimeter is a little bit soft but it's just bouncing off my Mac trackpad and this is just giving that subtle feel that's just kind of hitting my face over here we have a giant mess because I just been editing the past three days we have another m20c and that's motivating the computer screen so you could see on the monitor here uh, the blue lights just rimming the mic right here and that's again it makes it look like the computer screen is doing that so I'm just going to kill that light and you can see there's already light from the computer screen hitting the mic that's what inspired me and motivated me to use another blue light on there just you know to give it a little bit more punch so now i'm going to just kill the m20c that's on my face right here and you can see what it'll do once it turns off so now that's with it off and you can see naturally the fx3 is already picking up some of that warm light on me so again when i set up these scenes i see all these ambient tones and all these colors already in the scene and i just want to you know kind of push it up a little bit and enhance it a little bit that's what motivated lighting is and that's pretty much all i'm ever doing on these type of shoots it looks super natural but at the same time we can add just a little bit more contrast you know by kicking up whatever lights hitting on your subject or rimming your subject that's what makes it look cinematic i heard it. <laughs> Jesus. I feel like people like to overcomplicate these setups and think, you know, they're supposed to be big, but you can see, I'll put a link to all the stuff that I'm using, but you can use this, the same exact version or whatever version, but you see, I just have a simple tripod. It's just Jerry rigged up to hold everything up. FX3 with the Blazar Remus, most affordable and best anamorphics out right now for the price. And that's just going into my DJI wireless transmitter. You do not need something like this though. You could use a different brand if you want to. There's a bunch of different options. I just like using the DJI one because it comes with this monitor and it just kind of streamlines everything and it works with my more pro setups too if I need that. Also, if you guys are curious what tripod I'm using, I've mentioned this a few times on my channel. I've been using this for the past like year or two now. This is the Ulanzi and Komen carbon fiber tripod. 
Every road trip I've been on, this has pretty much been my uh, most used tripod just cause, you know, carbon fiber, super light. We have this ball head up here so I can easily uh, maneuver my camera around. Um, it does come with a proprietary plate. So what I did is I put that plate into this Arca Swiss plate. And so now I can use pretty much any of my rigs. There goes my phone lighting. But yeah, so the legs pretty much can fold all the way out. You just click down here and you see they go all the way up. So a lot of the times what I do is I kind of just, you know, get it into position and I try to get tension on it. So you can see one leg is down in here in the little cuppy. One's on the floor right here. Obviously I gotta be careful so you know it doesn't mess me up and I can't hit the gas or brake. This thing just makes it easy. Also, it does swivel too. And last but not least, when it comes to storytelling, something that's very important is music. One of my favorite films, No Country for Old Men, actually has zero music in it. But a lot of the times people will kind of mention the soundtrack from that film. And every time I'm just like, there is no soundtrack. So that movie does such a great job at creating pacing and timing. Uh, but obviously there's a lot of production value and there's an amazing story. So, you know, when we're shooting stuff like this, music can really help build that world for you. I use audio.com pretty much for everything. They are a sponsor of this video. Something that's super cool about audio.com is they have an AI tool. So, so you can get any of your favorite tracks from like Spotify. You can take the link, put it into their AI link match tool. And from there, it's gonna give you all these results that sound just like that song. It's why I've been using it for all my own videos. So if you guys go and like kind of pay attention to the music in my videos it really just kind of helps set the scene and the mood and my dialogue and everything that I'm trying to chase even if the video isn't super like dialogue intensive I still will use music to really just like kind of keep attention spans going